In our previous Basic Beginners Free CAD tutorial, we learnt about variant links and configuration tables, which allow multiple custom changes to be driven from a spreadsheet. In this lesson, we will create a simple parametric model in FreeCAD without using a spreadsheet. Instead, we will use custom properties on the body itself, allowing for multiple versions of the part driven by these properties. For this example, we'll create a tooth locking mechanism. The two parts are identical as set for the tooth size, which needs adjusting so they lock together properly. This method saves us from remodeling each version from scratch and allows us to dynamically control part dimensions, linking parts while avoiding circular dependency errors. So I'm starting with a very basic model of a padded ring. Inside, have a look at the sketch. I've just got a 15 millimeter inner and a 50 millimeter outer circle. And we've just padded that by five millimeters. Now, if we take the body, and look at the data tab. If I right click, I can add properties. We can use these in the sketch. Now there's a hurdle that you'll face and we'll overcome that in a moment. The properties I'm going to use is front tooth. This is going to be a length, which I'm unsure of yet. We'll add the property. And then the next one is the back tooth. I mean, that's property length. And we have a value which we'll add later. We can change the group to place them in another group if we wanted to, All we have to do it's just delete this and type in the group we want. So let's add that and click on the cross on the top right. Because I didn't change the group, it's gone under experimental, the last one there. We've got back tooth and front tooth. So now I'm going to calculate the size of those teeth and to take the top face and create a sketch. This is just a guide. I won't be using it in any operations. I'm going to use two arcs from the center point and we'll place one arc in here. This shows me where the teeth are going to start and end. And another one. And also a polyline from the center point. And I can see the center point of the arc isn't attached yet. So we'll just hover over that point coincident and bring the lines out and connect up coincident to the endpoints. And the same on the other side, that's right click to cancel and create another polyline. Connecting up, right click to cancel, right click to cancel the tool. Let's highlight these points here and use a coincident constraint. I need to nut the lines by taking these two lines, making them parallel, and the same on the other side, making these two parallel as well. I've got an extra arc here, so let's delete that and connect those two together with a coincident constraint. Make sure that the top arc, two points of the top arc, are centered over the vertical axis with a symmetrical constraint. I'm going to position these where I want the teeth to start and end. And we'll just set some radius as well. This one will set to 22. OK, that. And we'll set this one to 10. Next, I'm going to set the angle. So we'll take one line, then come over to the other line, zoom in, and set an angle in here. This will determine the size of the profile for the tooth. Do some basic maths in here, so 360 degrees. And I want something like 30 teeth, so I'll divide that by 30 and hit enter. That gives me the 12 degrees, which I can OK. We've got our plan for our profile. And also, I've got the span for the measurements for the tooth. So I can now take this plan, let's close it, and fill in my properties. So the back tooth here, I look from the top and click off. I can measure the length of this using the measuring tool. I take one vertex and control select the other vertex and we get 2.09. Let's just save that. That's for the back and zoom out and find the other. So again, select one vertex, control select the other vertex, and we get 4.6. We can save that as well and hit close. We've got our measurements. Let's just hide those and we'll update the body. Click on the body, We've got the back tooth, which is 2.09, and the front tooth, which is 4.6. We have our properties. 
So now we'll add a profile. Make sure nothing's selected because I want to add a profile on one of the base planes. We'll select the XZ plane. Use the toggle section view. We can see through there. We use a basic triangle for this. This can be any shape. Make sure we hover over the vertical axis. We'll coincident to that and create our first profile. Let's right click to cancel. Look from the front. Let's take this line and use horizontal constraint, tracing it up. And now we've got to position it from these two points using a dimension. This was the pad dimension, so five millimeters. Okay. It's just resized the screen. It hasn't actually padded upwards. We've got that there. Let's right click to cancel. Let's make sure this is in the right place and it doesn't move. It looks fine. We need to set the length here. Place the length in. This is where we're going to link it to the body. Let's come into the formula. Now, word warning here, we're going to get something called a cyclic reference error. So if I use body, which is where our parameters are, then dot. Now we don't specify the group, and this is our back tooth. You'll see the error come up down the bottom. Cyclic reference. This is basically when two objects want something from each other at time of calculating the results. It's kind of like a chicken and egg scenario. You may think that you've only put a body property into the sketch, but you didn't take anything back from the sketch. So there shouldn't be any dependency cycles. But the body is a whole object made up of the sketch inside and operations that use that sketch. You get the sketch looking at the body because of the property and also the body looking at the sketch because the body contains the sketch. This results in the dependency cycle. To solve this, we use the hidden reference function. Basically, we take our expression and place href on the front, open the bracket and close the bracket after the expression. The href function in FreeCAD essentially tells the software, do not record this as a dependency. Caution is needed when using this. You must ensure that this is not a true dependency cycle. In this scenario, using href is safe because the sketch only reads fixed properties from the body and does not feed back the value anywhere else. There's no actual circular dependency. Href simply prevents FreeCAD from misinterpreting the relationship. It's important not to use this method to force FreeCAD to ignore real dependencies, as this will slow down your models and lead to model instability. So now we've got this in, let's hit OK and OK again. We can now close out of the sketch. We can see our profile is at the center there and we'll move this in position up to this arc. We take the sketch, which is our back profile, our back tooth profile. We'll look at the attachment because it's attached to a plane, position and the Z. We'll change this and place it into position. So this should be minus 10 as we saw in the sketch. So next we'll create another profile, make sure nothing's selected. Create our second profile along the XZ plane. Toggle the section view, add triangle, making sure the center point is on the vertical axis and the bottom line is horizontally constrained. Now we can take two points, set some distance, five millimeters, and then set the distance of the bottom line using the expression editor going to the body dot front tooth we get the cyclic reference problem so we place href in front of it and bracket the end and hit ok and ok the length let's close take the sketch rename it this is going to be the front profile and reposition it along the z or the attachment offset, which is minus 22 millimeters. So we're all set now to take both the profiles, control select them, and create a loft between those, and hit OK. We'll now take the loft, 
and create a polar pattern, making sure we get the right axis. So we need base Z axis, which is this one. And the occurrence is, if we remember back, is 30 and hit OK. So now we've got our part, which can be controlled by the body. So the back tooth, we can change the dimension. Let's change that to five and you'll see this adjust. That's working. We don't need the distances anymore, but I'm going to leave them there for the time being. So now we can move on to the variant link. When we create a variant link, we need to prepare the properties of the body that we've just added to define their behavior. We click on the back tooth and then right click and come down to status. And there's an option called copy on change. We need to check that. And the same for the front tooth. Right click, status, and copy on change. This will tell FreeCAD to isolate those properties in the variant link and not update the parent. Now I can come up to the body, make sure it's selected, and select make link. So a new body has appeared. This is the link body. We'll transform the body, right click, and transform. Place it out of the way. And also, take it up. We'll flip it over as well, around this way. Look from the front. So we can see the teeth and how they compare. At the moment, these won't mesh together. So if I add some rotation and look from the front and bring this down, we can see that they're exactly the same size. And when this is 3D printed, they won't actually fit. Let's hit OK. We'll take the link and then come down to link copy on change. At the moment, it's disabled. Drop this down and select enabled. Now you see that the back tooth and the front tooth are in black. The allow compound is in green and the same as these properties here. So these ones are shared with the original. And if this is updated, it will update the original as well. These were originally green. So I'll take that body again and create another link. And we look down, we can see that those two are green. And the minute we change link copy on change to enabled, those two are now black. Let's just delete that link. So we have our new link. Notice that the sketch is still visible. Let's hide that. It gets hidden in both the body and the link. And now we can change the body, to the link body, and look at changing the size. So making these smaller. So let's change the front tooth. Make this 4.3 millimeters. Notice the change. And we can change the back as well. Let's go for 1.7 and click off. So now these two are different and we can see inside, let's hide the original body, make sure it's selected from the body, hide it there. We can see the change that's taken effect and these should mesh properly. Let's show the body. Take the link, right click, transform. As we bring this down, they now mesh correctly. There's space in between, so when we 3D print this, they won't be occupying the same space. Let's just hit OK. That's how to create a variant link with custom properties rather than using a configuration table and a spreadsheet. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.